Have you ever felt like you were that one person that everybody was staring at, that you were the freak in the room, that everybody's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> freak show, losing my religion next on So What? Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Waite. Welcome back to So What? Today, believe it or not, hold on, are are you seated? Brace yourselves. In fact, I'm going to brace myself. This is our final podcast in our series, Losing My Religion. That's right. It's so stunning. Don has to take his glasses off. It's such, he didn't want them to just blow off his face and then be be ruined. We've been doing this so long, I actually went bald. You know, friends, we realized last week that we've been doing this for a year. Yeah. And and the and the truth is we could do this for another year or two yeah. or whatever because because we could. <laughs> because we could. But you know, we, we we believe at this point it's time for us to end this series and move into our next one. Um, just because we think it's time to do something different. And, um, but before we leave this series, and as important as this series is, there's a few things we want to leave you with, okay? Yeah. So that for some reason, if you were in such terrible sin, you didn't watch the last 12 months of podcast, shame on you. Yeah, right. You haven't been successful in mortifying enough sin to watch our podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's a few things we want to leave you with in the hopes that, that this will just, just, we, honestly, we just want to encourage you. We right. want to encourage you in this battle because we know from personal experience how frustrating and disappointing this can be sometimes, the battle against our flesh. You know, maybe it's worth mentioning, Chris, that, you know, on the onset, that remember, just like we said that we could talk about this forever, this battle is not something that's going to end this side of glory. We're all going to be in this battle uh, for the rest of our lives here on earth, as long as the Lord tarries. And, and it's it's part of our existence, it's part of sanctification, and uh and so uh, we have to be relentless in it, right? That's right. That's exactly right. We can never grow weary. Mm. That's right. That's great. So the first thing is, if, you're, if, you're, if your desire truly is you really want to live for God, the first thing you got to keep in mind is you got to be a Christian. Yeah. You know, you, you will never successfully battle sin without being born again. Yeah. Because you can't do this without the Spirit of God. It's impossible. And you might be someone who, who's not a Christian. Yep. But you're, you're thinking, you know, maybe I could just be a better person. I could be a better version of me and I could try harder and I could be kinder and I could be gentler and I could be more humble. And I, you could be all these things. You could sort of look like Jesus on the outside. And that's, that sounds lovely and good, but you know what? It won't save you. It doesn't save you. Being a good person doesn't save you. You must be in Christ. You must be born again. And if you're not, if you're not, you will never successfully deal with sin, ever. You can't. Because you know, it's Chris, not about your battle with the flesh. It's about what the Holy Spirit's doing in you to battle the flesh. You know, because you know, you're, you're making me think of something really important here, and that is that at the end of the day, we're talking about battling sin, which is something that we see externally, but there's something more deep going on inside, right? And you're getting to the heart of this right now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it's, it's not just about my behaviors, but about what's driving that behavior. And so foundationally, fundamentally, if there hasn't been a changed heart, then where do we start? Right. right? So, man, that is good, good, good counsel, man. Yep. You know, and, and it makes me think of, you know, when you are converted, how excited we are. Remember how excited mm-hmm. you were when the Lord yeah. saved your heart and you, it was all so brand new. And you're in yeah. the victory that you had in Christ over sin was just palpable and yeah. you just wear it on your sleeve and you want to tell everybody about Christ and the gospel is so fresh. And then something happens and life creeps in and sin rears its head. And before you know it, we start thinking about the gospel in the past tense mm. and not necessarily about it in the present. Right. Yeah. And we start thinking like the Galatians maybe a bit more, where we start with the spirit, we start with the gospel, but we want to be perfected by the flesh and the gospel is not for us. Yeah. And then we get that good day, bad day thing going on. And we have, you know, we, we have a amnesia, a spiritual amnesia. We forget about what Christ has already done. And if we don't live into the gospel and under the gospel every day of our lives, we are not going to win in this battle. 
right? And that's point number two, okay? There are four things we want to talk about today. One is you got to be a Christian. Number two, Christians, you got to remember that you are not just saved by grace. Yep. You are sanctified by grace. We never, ever stop living in a state of grace. But so often, beloved, we forget that the gospel the good news is for us as Christians. We tend to, we need to preach the gospel to the unsaved. They need to know the glorious news of the freedom we have in Jesus Christ, freedom from the tyranny of sin, freedom from the slavery to Satan, right? We have a new father and all kinds of wonderful things. But we we think about that in the past tense, as Don just said, that that's something for non-believers to bring them to faith. But friends, we forget we forget, and then we make this battle about the flesh, about all about us and our effort, and we, it can get so discouraging. Yeah. We, one of the worst things we can do in dealing with sin is get so discouraged and beat ourselves up that we just stop trying. Because yeah. I've been there. I don't know if you have, Don, but I've been there. Yeah. I've been so discouraged. I just don't think I can. Right. But when I remember that the gospel is for me, that good news is for me. I don't have to beat myself up. My sin's been punished already. Right. I, I'm free to go back to my father anytime. Right. He who, he who knew no sin became sin for me that I might become the righteousness of God in him. And so he took that sin. We got to remember that. We got to remind each other of that. Right, Chris? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it's good, good preaching to remind you of the grace of God in the gospel. Just go read the sermons of Charles Hayden Spurgeon. Yeah, that yeah. man makes everything about Jesus. Everything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So that was number two, Chris. What's number that three? Number, number three. And, and this is, again, something that we don't think about in our battle against sin is we, we forget about the grace of God and we forget about who we are in Christ. We forget about our identity, who we truly are. We tend to look at ourselves, oh my gosh, I'm just this dirty, rotten, filthy sinner. And again, it, as we think, so we live. And so unless we elevate our thinking and we see ourselves as God declares us in the scripture, we can be really, really discouraged. And we don't live into who we truly are. The series that Don and I did before this one, Don, was what on, uh, what was the name of it? Who are you, right? Who are you? Yeah. We're trying to pull it, it up was, here so we can show people. <laughs> yep. It was all about our identity in Christ. Why is that important? Because, beloved, again, we, we just beat ourselves up so much. We forget about who we truly are, but the scriptures teach us that, that in Christ we are a new creation, that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are precious, that we are wanted, that we are works of art. You are God's poem. I mean, it's beautiful. And you know what? I need to be reminded of that. Don't, don't you? Oh, man. <laughs> this, see, the, just like this conversation, the who am I conversation is something that yeah. we need all the time, and we got to keep all going back to it. Absolutely. And so, so if you have to ask themselves, yeah. how do I find that? <laughs> that's that's right. If you didn't see that series on Who Are You, Don, show them how to do that. Okay, so I hope that you guys have the YouTube app. If you don't have that app on your phone, please download that. It's going to be the easiest way to get to it. So open your YouTube app. And then I also hope that the you YouTube subscribe. Sanctuary, the Sanctuary app. Yes. Not yeah, right. Get a YouTube and a Sanctuary channel, right? Right, right. It's, so hopefully you subscribe to that. You go to subscriptions and then you'll find your subscriptions up at the top. You just simply hit the Sanctuary subscription. It says view channel, hit that. And then, this is important, go to playlists. You'll go down, I think most likely most of you will see it within the first few. When you hit the So What series, then you can scroll until you get to the beginning of our series on your, our identity in Christ. And the name of that first podcast is Who Are You? So just look for that title. And that was in September. That was in September of 2018. My and goodness. we did that series for My seven goodness. months. There it is, right there. There Wonderful. it is. Yeah. Yep. We want to encourage you, friends. We want to encourage you, please go back and watch that series. Hear what the scriptures say about who you are. Not what Satan tells you, not what your flesh is telling you, but what the scriptures tell you about who you are in Christ. You want to be encouraged? Watch that series. Watch Absolutely. that series. It will encourage you so much. Because, Chris, and I want to ro roll this back into our, our conversation here. At the end of the day, we, we talked a lot about this, right? We talked about we, a lot about how we, we live into who we believe we are. Mm 
-hmm. And, you know, between our own minds and our own hearts condemning us and what the enemy does to play on that in our lives and what the world tells us, and many times people have folks in their lives and honestly are not speaking truth into their lives, but are speaking death into their lives. We have to saturate ourselves with who we are and be reminded, right? So that we can live into that, Chris. It's, it's so easy to get our eyes somewhere else and think, man, I'm just, I'm just a piece of dirt. You know, I'm nothing. And it's like, look, outside of Christ, that's right. But I'm in Christ. And so yeah. we need to be reminded of what it means to be yeah. in Christ. Yes, totally. And, and how are we reminded? Where do we go? Oh, this, is point, this is point number four. Point number four. We need to be in the Word of God. And if there was any one topic... Chris, that we spent the most time time on during this series, it's been on the Word of God. That's right. Right? That's right. That's right. We spent, a, I, I don't know what, three months maybe just on studying the Word of God, the discipline of study. Yeah. In the middle of that, though, we actually, we pulled back for a moment. We said, you know what? Oh, my goodness. We need to make sure people are just actually simply being in the Word. That's right. right. I mean, this is a kind of a moot conversation if we don't know that people are actually in the words. So the first thing is, is are you in the Bible, right? I put these books up behind me here because there's some wonderful books about mortification of sin uh, by Jerry Bridges and by John Owen and by others that just are wonderful. But the, the reality is, is this book in the middle, the Bible, that's what we need, right, Chris? That's, that's right. ultimately where we're going to find the sanctification. Why? Because Romans 12 tells us we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Jesus right. says we need to be sanctified by the truth. And it's his word that is truth, right? That's right. So with those in mind, how can we not be in the word, right? Then maybe this podcast is freak show because we, you know what? You want to stand out for all the right reasons. Yeah. You really do want to be a freak in the sense that the world sees you as something completely other, so completely different, so completely strange and foreign that they're like, huh? What's up with that guy? What's up with that chick? What's going on with them? I want to know more because they're different in all the right ways. They're compassionate and gentle and kind and patient and forgiving and generous. What is it about them? I, I, I want more of that in my life. You know what? You want to be a freak. Yeah. You do. You want to be a freak. This world is dark. This world is lost. And we are to shine like stars, beloved. We're to shine like stars. Or we're to stand out. We're to be freaks. We are freaks of nature. Right? We're, we are. Noah, man, you're building the ark in the middle of dry land and everybody's going, you're an idiot. They're scoffing. Yeah. Because they think you're an idiot, but you have this hope that they can't explain. But they may be frustrated with you, and that's okay. Because you know what? It's not about what they think. It's about what God thinks. And we know what he thinks about you when you're in Christ. Right on. Right? On. right? That's right. So bring it on. I want to be a freak. It was DC Talk that talked talk about being a Jesus freak, right? So, friends, really, ultimately, sin is a battle for the mind. Yeah. Sin is a battle for your mind. And sin starts here. The heart desires, you're thinking about it, you're contemplating, and then you do. So the mind has to be transformed. It has to be renewed so that your life can be transformed and renewed. How? Through the word of God. Yeah. So first, you got to be a Christian. You got you, you got to be a Christian. What's number two, Don? Well, you need to live into the gospel now. The gospel is for you yeah, now. That's right. That's right. Number three. If you're not sure exactly what all that means, then you got to understand your identity. So you see how that outflow of grace impacts every area of your life and what God declares you to be. It's important that you see that, that you read that, that you believe it. How do you read it and see it? In his word. Yes. In his word. Because say it again, it's a battle for your mind. So that mind's got to be transformed. That your life could truly be an act of worship. Hmm. Which, you know what, Chris, leads me to think about our next series. Yeah. What does it mean to profit from being in the Bible? That's right. Right? What should you be looking for when you're in the Word? You know, like, it's okay. We're saying, okay, you need to be in the Word. We've talked about some specific things, but we want to be even more specific. And Don and I are both fans of a guy by the name of A.W. Pink. And he wrote a book uh, many years ago. It's called Profiting from the Word. Actually, Don, I don't know if it was a book he published or if it was articles that were all compiled after his death. It doesn't make right. any difference. 
but there's a book called Profiting from the Word, and we're gonna use that as the text for our next series to encourage you in the Word, things to look for in the Word, to challenge you, uh, encourage you, strengthen you, fortify you for your ongoing battle against the flesh, that your body, that your body could bring honor and glory to Christ. Man, I love it. I just love it, Chris. Well, this Looking forward to it. Really excited. Yeah, this has been a fun series, and it's going to continue to be fun, and I hope that everybody can stick with us and, and yeah. jump in with us for this next series. Yeah, really looking so forward. Yeah. Till then, thank you for tuning in, my friends, and I'll talk to you next week. We'll see you soon.